in the beginning of July, it was really hot across Italy and kind of around the Mediterranean. It's been very dry there as well, so there's been kind of drought conditions, um, starts of drought conditions in kind of northern Italy, which has been a, uh, a real problem. Because there's been some quite shocking events. So, for example, there was the, um, the collapse of the, uh, the glacier uh, in the Dolomites near Marmalada, um, which caused uh, a, a number of deaths and has caused quite a bit of disruption in the, in the locality. As kind of July went on, then uh, temperatures built uh, across, across Europe, um, so particularly the Iberian Peninsula, down in Portugal and Spain and southern France was really, really hot. A number of wildfires kind of were, were been initiated and have been kind of uh, burning ever since. And eventually that hot air hit the UK, which led to record breaking temperatures in the UK and, and wildfires starting in the UK as well, which is, um, you know, really, really unusual. Hitting the 40 degree threshold in the UK it was pretty shocking. I mean, when we've sort of looked at climate model projections, we kind of expected that um, to sort of see temperatures of 40 degrees at some point in the UK uh, with climate change, but probably somewhere around sort of 2030, 2040, maybe 2050 even. I read a couple of articles that were saying that Europe is reportedly warming up faster than the rest of the world. Would you say that's correct? And if so, what would we attribute that to? Global temperatures are going up everywhere, um, but there's places in the world where they go up faster than the global average. So for example, the Arctic is, is one of the real hotspots of uh, global temperature rise because, you know, as the sea ice melts, it exposes the, um, the darker, warmer surface temperatures uh, uh, beneath it. Um, and so that leads to a kind of a, a positive feedback. And there's similar positive feedbacks over Europe. Um, so, for example, we, we know that um, land will warm up faster than the oceans, partly due to the thermal inertia of land versus the oceans, but also due to the way that moisture changes um, over, uh, over the land. So we know that Europe will warm, warm faster than the global average. And that means for, uh, for Europe that we're going to see more frequent and more intense heat waves. But also, you know, as, as temperatures go up, it means the atmosphere will hold more moisture and we'll also see more extreme rainfall and, you know, larger flooding events. So, for example, the uh, the absolutely shocking uh, flooding that happened in Central Europe last summer. This is happening at the same time as the EU decided to classify gas, a fossil fuel, as a renewable source. The UK government uh, was taken to court because of their lack of action on the on their net zero map. In the US, we have seen Congress sort of like blocking climate policy, and then. COP26 was in October a few months ago where people were saying this is a decade where we need to act on climate change if we're to avoid a climate catastrophe. But it, it, it can be really easy in situations like that to think that we're not doing enough and we can see governments sort of like taking steps backwards. What are your thoughts on that? At times, uh, I think politicians uh, kind of step back from the, the strong statements that they made at COP26 um, and they find ways of um, perhaps not uh, strongly acting on, uh, on, the, on the kind of pledges that they've made in the past. And I think, you know, as, as citizens, concerned citizens we, and as scientists, we, we need to keep our politicians uh, on the straight and narrow. We need to keep making sure that, and calling out that, you know, climate change is a real issue um, and that it needs serious action if we're going to address it. And I think generally these, these really big events, like the heat wave that we're having in Europe at the moment, they are a call, a real wake up call uh, for ourselves as citizens, but also for, the, for our politicians, that we do need to keep acting on climate change, both in terms of mitigating and reducing our carbon emissions, but also in terms of how we're going to adapt to a warmer climate.